Ladies and gentlemen, Happy New Year. Victory Monday here. The On My Block Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Well. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, hit that like button, subscribe, rate, and review us on our Process to Perform channel on YouTube. If you want to listen to the audio version of this show, which again, we play a ton of videos. If you're listening to the audio version, I'm happy for you and I'm happy you're listening. But turn the video on because we do a lot of film breakdown here. But you can check us out on the Believe Network anywhere you get your podcast. You can hit the audio version of this show. Our show is sponsored, as always, by betonline.ag. And this new year, all the major sports are in action this week. College football playoffs happening today, actually. I think my parents are watching the Oregon game right now. Bet Online is your number one destination for all your sports wagering information, including news for pro football, the National Basketball Association, upcoming fights, and NHL games this season. So head to the website today and get into the action and see all the updated odds for the week. Remember to use your promo code BELIEVE. That's B-L-E-A-V. To receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit, bet online where the game starts. Packers ran over the Minnesota Vikings 33-10. to 10. Much needed win. Keeps them in the playoff contention now. In fact, I believe if they beat the Bears late next week, they're in no matter what. A lot of crazy stuff happening this week. We're not going to talk about the Lions thing. There's a lot of crazy stuff that happened this week. But uh, when you when you go to Minnesota, like I don't care. I've just played enough there to tell you, it is so hard to win in Minnesota. Great crowd, always a good team. Defense plays better at home usually. You just expect them to. It, you'd expect it to be a grinded out game, and the Packers just absolutely. Uh, I don't want to say they mauled them. But the guys that just need to show up and play ball for this team, Aaron Jones, you know, Jordan Love on offense, Jaden Reed on offense, obviously those guys are playing hot. Tucker Craft played a, played a hell of a game as well in the run and pass. Uh, in the run game in particular was something that really impressed me. I'll show a couple of tapes, of clips of that. And then defensively, you know, you're playing your this fourth-string quarterback. This, this, uh, to be fair, the kid probably shouldn't have been in the game. Talk about the kid Hall. He probably shouldn't be in the game. He, not a, he finished 5 for 10, 67 yards and an interception. But the reality is everything has to be perfect for, for it to go well for him. If he gets off schedule, if he has to move his feet, if he has to run to sideline to sideline, it's not going to be a completion. And you saw two different like styles of defense, the much maligned Packers Joe Barry led scheme. And then Brian Flores, who you know have, applies pressure more than anybody else in the league. And what happened was you saw the difference between a really good or a really well prepared quarterback receiving gr offensive group against this pressure package, and what the holes were in their defense. Because remember, Brian Flores doesn't have the corners to play the defense he wants. Like when he was the head coach of Miami, he's got Xavier Howard, he's got uh, Byron Jones, I think, at the, for for a spell before he got hurt. He's got dudes that can play that defense. You can't play him with these guys. So they're trying to create zones in the back end, and there's just holes everywhere. And for whatever reason, it feels like the last couple of games, once you start doing all the motion stuff, they stop messing around as much. Whoever's going to show is going to go. And then Jordan Love just did such a good job of checking that guy. If he's going, we're throwing the other way. Or excuse me. If he... If that guy in the line of scrimmage, I'm talking about the safety, whoever's coming to the pressure guy comes, they're throwing into the teeth. If he doesn't show up, they're throwing the other side. It's the soft side. And they did the same thing in the run game. It's it's just the amount of like feast and famine it was with that defense because of what they have to do on the back end was just too much for the Vikings to overcome. They were they have some a, a miscommunication errors in the backside that we just feasted on as well. And then you look at the other side, Preston Smith. We talked about it pregame in our preview show. Who, you know, what are the matchups? Well, Rashad Gary's going to get doubled. He did. Preston Smith's got to win. He did. Kenny Clark versus um, Garrett Bradbury. Kenny Clark's got to win. He did. Guys, bring Coy Walker on on pressures. He plays he plays better downhill. He did. These guys in our zone, you know, Jay Alexander's not playing. Valentine Valentine to that combination, playing that zone defense, doing a good job against the run, particularly at the line of scrimmage. And then not trying to bite, take a too big a bite of the apple, just play within the system. And again, you're playing a four string quarterback and bringing Nick Bones in the second half, but the game's out of line. Like, I didn't even show tape on the second half because who cares? It's like 23 to three. Game's over. So, the two themes of the day really your quarterback play matters. Jordan Love, he finishes uh, 24 of 33, 256, three touchdowns, no picks. 
combined the quarterbacks and the Vikings counted for 17 for 32, 180 yards, one touchdown, one pick. Absolutely brilliant pre-snap recognition pre-snap recognition from Jordan Love and, and really the entire offense. Just absolutely brilliant in the way that they're prepared for this game, the way they executed. We talk about it every week. Identification, communication, execution. They killed it. They absolutely killed it. The Vikings quarterbacks, they need time. They just can't do what Kevin O'Connell wants them to do. Like Kevin O'Connell's really, really good as a play caller, but Kirk Cousins is so much higher than these guys that it's just not a fair. It's really, it feels like, and I don't want to minimize, you're playing in the NFL, so you got to play, the Packers have to play who's in front of them. But it feels like it's not even a fair fight when you watch the ineptitude of the Minnesota Vikings at the quarterback position versus like when, when Kirk Cousins is in the game and how it exposes a lot of the problems that they actually have. My second theme of the day is like Aaron Jones, 29 years old. Yeah. He's had some injuries. He's so guys, he's so good. I don't know where he ranks in all of the really good running backs in the league, but he is, he's so much better than anybody else on the field at times during this game, the last couple of weeks. I think last week he had 127 yards. He had uh, 20 carries, 120 yards this week, six six yards a carry. And a ton of those are just those chunk runs. And what chunk runs do, just for the fan out there, it's like if you you fell forward for six yards a carry, man, life sucks. No question about it. But if you're getting 10, 12, 15, you're breaking out big yards like you did last week against Carolina – it changes the way the defensive play caller has to call plays. He's like, we can't give up chunk plays. If you give up six yards of carry, you could say, oh, their center is going to get a hold. Uh, they're going to have a bad, you know, they're going to give up a sack. They're going to have two incompletions, bad throw, bad catch, something. If you're giving up 20 yards a clip or, you know, every once in a while, every time the guy touches the ball, it's a threat to go to the yard. It's a completely different game. And now the offensive line, the tight ends, you don't have to hold blocks that long because this guy's playing so much faster than everybody else. It is a different play speed than everybody else that they have in the backfield. And it just makes such a difference in the way that it makes a difference in the way that they see themselves. It makes a difference in the way that it makes a way it makes a difference in the way that the offensive line, the tight ends, they see them. They think they're better than they really are because he's so good. They can run the exact same blocking scheme for him versus AJ Dillon. AJ can get two yards, go sideways. Aaron Jones can have a touchdown. He's I mean, it's that big of a difference. And the other players aren't bad. It's just that big of a difference. He's just play, he's just he's playing as well at 29 years old as I has ever as, that I have ever seen him play running the football. It's unbelievable how good he's playing right now. Let's enjoy some of this. Let's watch some tape. As you know, here we go chronologically. Because we have to. So first thing is we talk about affecting the quarterback. And one of the things I showed on the preview show, uh, we talked about last week, is as good as I think Darius is a good player, a good left tackle, young guy, really good. These guys play each other all the time. Preston Smith always has success. Not always, but he's had success in the past. Affecting the quarterback here, that's a win. That's a sack fumble if he holds the ball for another snap. But you feel the pressure, you get him drifting off the play. And listen, you got a young quarterback in there. This right here, this is going to be an incompletion for these guys. Like they're just not, it's a they're already heated up. He was heating up walking out of the tunnel. He's already thinking about getting hit. Walking out of the tunnel. I mean, this is a you know, this is a big time game for this kid. There's a lot of pressure on him, and it's natural to feel that. So a lot of this stuff just isn't going to go the way you want it to. We talked pre-step recognition. This is the second, uh, I think they were, you know, not three and out, but it was pretty quick at out first uh First series. So this is second series. We're talking about pre-snap recognition. So they show down here the safety is going to show up. We got trips left. Everybody's walked. They got two linebackers mugged up. When they're in this look right here, they don't have enough people to cover over on this side. Talking about towards towards the bottom of the screen. So one of these linebackers has to get out to the flat, and they can run some form of cover two and have that safety hang on the flat look. But they have a problem. And they're going to sit at the sticks. Now, Jordan Love can th- throws a heater here. I think this is the Dobbs on, on the stick route. And even though that corner is sitting outside, the way that Dobbs comes back towards 
the first down marker to get to this ball. We saw this a couple of weeks ago, not running into that cornerback, but running away from that quarterback, still catching the ball on the plus side of the 30 for the first down. It's just a, it's like a really, it's a little wrinkle that doesn't show up, but like that's high football intelligence, right? He can run that thing flat like he's supposed to and run right into the corner and get blown up or the corner could have a pick, or he can go back towards the line of scrimmage, get the first down, live to fight another day. Same thing here. Harrison Smith's up at the line of scrimmage. He's showing that he's going to go. The first thing Jordan Love does is he checks Harrison Smith. Harrison drops. Now they've got that coverage on this side, so what's he going to do? He's going to go to the other side where the tight end has leverage on the linebacker up top. So all they do is they run it up and out. They run up with the wide receiver. They run a little arrow out with the, with the tight end. Out leveraged. Tucker Craft, first down. It's just, okay. They go into the game. Jordan, as soon as you get the ball, are they coming or not? If they're coming, throw into it. If they're not coming, look over here. It's not that simple, but it's pretty darn close, and he did a great job of it. You talk about having leverage. What do I mean by that? So they bring Jaden Reed in motion. They've got, now they're going to have a two-by-two. Two. But 44, the captain for the Minnesota Vikings, is inside of the X receiver. So as we go in motion here, you see this, you see on the 50 yard line, you see the corner playing eight yards off outside leverage. But because we're going motion, now you're in a situation where the flat player, the flat defender, is inside of both receivers. And all we have to do at the X position is run straight up the field. And you've got flat open because the, the corner can't get there. And Jordan Love's just doing a great job getting rid of the ball, throwing on schedule, throwing on time, throwing in the right position for his players to catch, turn up field, get an extra couple of yards. It's fantastic. And the other thing is chaos works both ways. And what I mean by that is, you got all this stuff happening on the Minnesota uh, Vikings defensive front. They're running all these different combinations. They're running different pressure looks. They're trying to drop into cover two. They're trying to do all this stuff, okay? But they're not set. They're not ready here at the line of scrimmage. So now they're playing catch up. So it works both ways. This is a, this is a key third down throw here. It works both ways. The safety has to drive there because the, because the linebacker isn't in his coverage position because they're not set up yet. This is a, this is what, this is another, Aaron Jones is better than your running back, right? Like, this is what I'm talking about. So you, you kind of watch the outside here and they have Tucker Craft and he did this a lot yesterday. He singled up, uh, single blocked. I think this is, this Tucker or Sibs, I'll check on this, on the end zone copy, but that is not a good block. Okay. But Aaron Jones is, the play speed is so fast. That he just can't get, the 91 can't get to where he needs to be. I think I have the end zone cop. Look at this. You see it here. Yeah. So so Sims is inside. They're doing a double with Rashid Walker. They do a great job of blunting that and getting up to the second level. Tucker Craft is all on his own. And let me tell you, and usually I would go, this is crazy because I would send Sims outside and let Rashid Walker be on his own. But they felt that that the the important because of the, the way that the Minnesota Vikings run this base defense, they think that defense, the outside linebacker defensive end is going to be wide. So they can, they have a little more leeway with, with uh, Aaron Jones. He can run outside or he can run downhill, but look at the play speed. So right now, Tucker Kraft's beat. What happens is Malik Heath, the outside receiver does such a good job covering up the corner. This is how you get reps in national football league. You do the dirty work as well as you can. This is such a big time block. He doesn't have to make a cut. He basically is saying, I can out, 91's facing the wrong direction. I can outrun him. And he can only because the receiver outside 18, uh, Malik Heath, is doing such a good job at covering up the DB. This is this is just a big time block. Man, you want to get on the field? This is how you get on the field. Just drive, drive, drive. Man, it's big time. That is big time. It's fun to watch. We got a three v one bunch look up top on the right of the uh, center, 
And this is like this game could have been worse, man. This is this is wide open. He just misses this throw. And so as good as he's playing, his numbers were excellent. Could have been better. 24 for 33 for 256 and three touchdowns. And you look at the fourth and one in this play, we'll show the fourth one in a minute. Easily four touchdowns here. And as you end up with a, a field goal, and what we're doing now is from a defensive standpoint, is you're just taking advantage of inexperience. And so this is the pick. And the deal is here, this is pretty easy. So they're running the double crosses underneath, right? The two shallow crosses. And he sees that Quay Walker is gonna, gonna go ahead and take a shot on, on the guy going from left to right. So he goes from right to left. And you can't drift. And this is why. I think the announcer said last night that, you know, Kirk Cousins, whatever, says there's nothing you can do here. Hawkinson's out of the game. He's not playing. So your backup uh, tight ends in. And one of the most, the key thing is like, you can't drift in zone. You either sit down or you keep going, right? It's like karate down the right side of the road, karate down the left side of the road. Okay. Down the middle, get squished like grape. Oh, the Miss Miyagi saying, you got to be all in or all out. If you start drifting, the quarterback doesn't know where to throw the football. So this is just a mistake by the tight end. Quarterback throws it. Easiest pick he's ever going to have. Fantastic. Take advantage. Got to make the plays when they're there to be made. Fantastic. You just see, it's not that he threw a bad football. It's that the, the tight end has to sit down. But again, not our problem. This is what the Minnesota Vikings are trying to do on defense. Talk about Flores. Right? This is schematically what they're trying to do. So they bring the linebacker off the line of scrimmage and they and they drop the uh, drop the safety in the corner on the bottom of the screen, okay? But they're hovering. Why? Because now they feel like they're going to have to get the ball out fast. They ran the orbit motion with, uh, with Jaden Reed, give the ball to him, and now you got two-on-one, close down, get a tackle for loss. This is what they're trying to do, okay? This is what they don't want to do, and this is the touchdown play. So they're showing single safety high. Excuse me, Harris, Harrison Smith down near the line of scrimmage. I got him circled up. So far, when he's been there, chances are, unless he's unless he's manned up on somebody, he's coming. Okay, but one way or another, they're going to have to drop on the backside. So they end up bringing him, and now the linebackers have to drop, and they're trying to take the corner and turn this into cover two. So they're taking the corner who's on the NFL logo up at the 25-yard line at the top of the screen. They're dropping him back as a deep safety. And then Hicks, 58, who's in the middle of the screen just below the ha uh, the number or the hash mark, he's going to have to play that like Tampa that Tampa linebacker who's really got the middle of the field. And Jordan does a good job of throwing. And listen, you know, Chris Collins, whoever, they're talking about flipping your, I mean, your feet are off the ground. Look, what he's doing is he's flipping his hips into the throw so he can throw a rocket. OK, on a line and throws it right over the top of this this linebacker. I think I get the end zone look here. So what he sees is. Because that corner is retreating now, you got to remember the single safety uh, went over to the left side of the screen here. So there's tons of space in the middle of the field to throw down the, either you know, throw between the uh, the hash mark. And all you got to beat is the is the linebacker and that linebacker isn't built to deal with your slot receiver so he just throws a rope really good throw and catch that's just big time a lot of people are asking okay are we better off without you know stokes and zaire and, and you know rasul no the answer is you're best off with your your best coverage guys okay unless you're going to play a lot of cover too now, if you're going to play up the line of scrimmage, this is exactly what you want, especially from your young guys. And he misses the tackle here, so I, I'm acknowledging that. But look at the physical play here. You get there. Stack and shed. Throw the guy on the ground. Force the cut from the the spin and the cut from the running back. I, that, that's just – that's that is a, a kid who's trying to be a really good football player and is taking every part of the game – that he needs to be good at and trying to excel. You're not just going to be a cover guy. You're not you're, you're not going to be a cover two corner. You're trying to be good at everything you're asked to do and you have to appreciate that. You want to make the tackle, but you have to appreciate the physical play at the uh, at the line. Now, again, you know, 
people are asking me, well, what, what's different? What's different? The quarterback plays different. He's playing a four string quarterback. Last week, he played the number one pick in the draft. Three weeks ago, he played uh, the other number one pick in the draft from years ago, Baker Mayfield. That's the difference. This play is indicative of the entire game. So Hill has the ball. Maybe he's got a little bit of pressure. Maybe he doesn't. Okay. It's a three step drop. And you can't see the whole play, but listen, Justin Jefferson has our guy beat. If he's even, we're leaving, right? He's beat. This is a bad ball. And in other games, Kirk Cousins comes up with a way to make this happen, whether it's a back shoulder throw, whether he leads them more. Kirk Cousins makes maybe makes this more interesting. Great stop. You got to be there. You got to make the play on the ball that's thrown. All I'm saying is, a lot of this has to do with like you don't have the same quality player throwing the football than you do usually with the Minnesota Vikings. So I, you're happy to win, but you also don't want to take this information, what you saw last night, and go, oh, yeah, this is a huge – like they've really taken this huge leap. It's like, no, the defensive line played a lot better, got him off his spot, and he's not nearly as good as, the other, as, as their starter. Otherwise, he'd be the starter. You see here. Ball's not gone. It's a three-man rush. Ball's not gone. I mean, I, I'm i just looking. I don't know anything, but I, I do know that uh, up at the uh, top of the logo, you get your tight end open. I know that. So now he's running towards the sideline. When you're playing an inexper inexperienced quarterback who doesn't have a monster arm, somebody who's named, let's say, that's not a household name, this is all you want. If you're a defense, this is really what you want him to do. He's going to throw the ball out of bounds like nine time, 19 times out of 20 in this. Like 19 times out of 20, you're not going to get a reception on this play right here. As soon as he starts running towards the sideline with his chest going towards the sideline, not downhill. When I talk about a quarterback escaping and, and not being able to square up his shoulders, go downhill, this is exactly what I'm saying. I mean, that's almost always an out of bounds throw. So it's fantastic. Now we go under center. And this is the difference between – this is A.J. Dillon. And I'm not – listen, I'm not saying A.J.'s bad. I'm saying Aaron Jones is that good. Here's the difference in play. I'm going to rewind this just to stick here. Okay. So if we're going to look at the right guard, Sean Ryan, okay, he's in. They're going to run a B on the backside. And he's taking an angle. And uh, the Minnesota Vikings, number 40, their linebacker goes underneath, okay? And you see that Josh Myers – is has his shoulders turned to the sidelines and is trying to run with Harrison Phillips. And you see, we got a kick out by Rasheed Walker, and you see you got a, a good drive block or a, some sort of block by El Elgin Jenkins. Okay. Right here, the hole is between the backside tackle who was running the B and Josh Myers. You hit, you just you tuck it, you go straight downhill. Aaron Jones goes downhill, gets a minimum of four to five yards here. Okay. But AJ takes it all the way back, runs into the backside linebacker, and gets tackled for one yard, two yards. And that, I mean, that is really the difference when we talk about what you, what, what the, how do you like, how do you get AJ better? And also, like, what is the difference between Aaron Jones and a lot of these other backs? Is like right there, you don't go for two, man, you go for five. And just put your head down and just go forward. Anytime A.J. Dillon turns his shoulders uh, to the sideline, it's usually bad. Bad film session for the Minnesota Vikings defense here, guys. I'm going to show this from two angles, okay? this is that is that We're in the NFL. That should never be a completion. Throwing off your back foot, good recognition by Jordan Love throwing it into space. But why is there space? I mean, when I show this from the other angle, it's tough to believe, right? So – this is halfway through the play. My apologies. They ran the orbit with uh, Jaden Reed. Harrison picks him up. The linebacker chases, realizes he's doing the wrong thing. Now, down at the bottom of the screen, you got two guys. One's chasing uh, Jaden Reed across the screen, the safety. The other one's covering our, receiver, our slot receiver. About Right about here, the guy whose arrow is pointed towards Jaden Reed realizes, oh, I have the entire other half of the field. Whoops. And they just have a miscommunication. We've seen this before from, you know, many teams. But, oh, my goodness gracious. You just can't have that uh, when you're playing for a playoff spot. 
Great job by Jordan Love identifying the issue and putting the ball in a place where people can make plays. I'm not, I'm not saying anything about the quality of the pass or anything. What I'm saying is great job recognizing it, but it's amazing to me with that defense at the level they've been playing at that you have some of these blunders that they had last night. Okay, so Vikings are playing palms up defense right here. And what do I mean by that? Palms is like a version of cover four where you where, where the, the backside safety traps a, a trips look when they come, the first guy who comes across the middle. So that's like a palms defense, right? Like a like a palm like like a think about a palm tree covers everything from the shade. So it's a it's a it's a four across the top defense. Okay. But these guys are just playing palms up defense. Like what are we doing right here? Here's what I'm saying. So you got a fourth and one look. And it, we've been talking a lot about how leverage issues occur when you got these stacked receivers on the top side and they've got more than enough guys here. And again, their captain plays the run and just leaves a player wide, wide open. And it's a shame. This, I mean, this game could have been a lot worse as bad as it was. This could have been 47 to, to, to 10. You look at some of these plays. And right there, that was a nine nights game. I mean, that if it's 17 nothing right there, the game ended up being a nine nights game by the second half, anyways. But this is go to bed early, guys, or or, or go celebrate New Year's Eve or New, you know, because this game's over if they catch that ball. This is why the Minnesota Vikings are 27th ranked rush offense. Now, what I'm showing you right here, Corey Wooden is, is trying to push down Christian Derrissaw. And the argument is that 50 50 here. So a running back should be able to jump cut and get downhill. Quay's going to end up making this tackle, I think, on uh, in that hole. But the, they're 27th ranked for a reason. It's not like their offensive line just got a lot worse or they're different than they used to be. Look, they got rid of Dalvin Cook. Sometimes things just aren't clicking. This is a well-blocked play where I think the last three weeks, this goes for 20. And last night, for whatever reason, they just can't – Madison just can't quite get right. That's, I'm sorry, that wasn't Quay. That was uh, Nixon. Can't quite get right, but we just we – just, end up making it a, a short game. Fantastic. Quarterback needs time. So we bring Quay. I think I, saw, I talked about this last week or the week before. When you bring a linebacker from death and he's kind of been the count, it's actually one of the easiest things to pick up because all the other people are just have a rush lane sound. Like they're, they're limited in what they can do. And the other thing is, if you'll notice, I, I'll bring this up the next rep, but you have your backups in a lot kind of from the 30 to the to the following 40 now. Like it all, it's almost like you're starting your backups in a lot of these drives. You're starting with your backup, your second unit defensive line. And when they when this quarterback has time, he ends up making a couple throws in a row here. So you got one to Justin Jefferson. So second rush unit in. Yeah, food for thought. It's just something to think about. So you get your second rush unit. He's got plenty of time again. And he ends up going across the middle. Like these are... The difference is, it's not like people aren't ever open in zone defense against Packers, against anybody. It's that when your quarterback has a lot of time to throw in a clear lanes, like it's not, it's, it's when it's a seven on seven game, they get a lot of completions. Now, key matchup we talked about Kenny Green versus, um, I'm forgetting the name of the, uh, of the uh, Garrett, uh, Garrett Bradbury, their center. And he's, he, I said he wasn't a fish, but he struggled the week before. And Kenny's had his number. Beats him bad here. Gets through. Ends up, they ends up converging for the sack. Um, unfortunately, my man Isaiah McDuffie gets hurt here with, I think, a concussion. Hopefully, he's all right. But Kenny makes that play go with winning an individual matchup. Our defensive line, just like the Lions game, you're winning individual matchups makes a huge difference. Under center. We're talking about creating space. So they're doing a lot of this motion that, every, you know, Kyrie Kill and the Miami Dolphins really kind of made famous. We're doing this the motion away from the, the ball towards at the line of scrimmage and catching speed. What is it doing? It's putting that corner who's in a green circle. It's making him a softer edge. It's giving him a, soft, a softer corner, more space to get full speed downhill on, and then steps into the throw. Look how good uh, Jordan Love is when he steps into his throws, man. I mean, just really, really good ball. So we come back on the return, and you just see he's already just given up more ground. Talk about 21. And then right here, 
What a job. Now he's trying to force with his leverage and his body position, he's trying to force him inside so he can drive on it. And Harrison Smith's in there to help. You know, unfortunately, it doesn't have good enough. Unfortunately for the Vikings, it doesn't have a good enough leverage. Jaden Reed with a great route. Great toe tap here. That's big time, man, for a rookie. Crazy. You don't see this often anymore. Under center, this isn't play action. He just does a quick five-step drop. One, two, three, four, five, back foot, step and throw. Really good job. You know, you think about from a play call and spam, everything you're trying to incorporate. This is just a really good way for Matt LaFour to get Jordan Love a quick five-step in rhythm, out route to Tucker Craft. Tucker's not doing any more of that hurley nonsense. Man, we're low on our shoulder from now on. I love it. No more cup checks in the middle of the game. But I really like you. Know, under, when's the last time you saw just an under center five step drop from a quarterback? They just don't do it anymore. Like they might throw the ball at the line of scrimmage. But everything else is like play action nonsense, right? So just from a timing standpoint, what it does for the offensive line, really like the play call. Again, Matt LaFleur is just coming up some really good game plans. Really the last you know month and a half. Amazing. Amazing transition of what these this offense has been able to do, generally speaking, over the last couple, uh, you know, maybe five, six games with those really good game plans. Now look at Madison, not Madison, sorry, the, uh, the, the, the safety 44 for the Minnesota Vikings. Now this is not a way to, you got to, you got a two by two look and he turns his back to the tight end arrow route in the flat and tries to catch up. And I, and I mean, if I'm at, on the sidelines, you know, he's the captain. It's like, this is not the way you want to play ball. You know, this stuff, and maybe they're, maybe they're saying, hey, you got to get hands on first, first receiver. And that's why he's doing it. But it just, it makes it so easy when your quarterback is willing to take the five yard or the arrow route and he can throw it on time and in position like Jordan loves doing this game. It makes it so easy for the, for the uh, Green Bay Packers to move the sticks. Now you go under center. And I just put this play in. It's not even a first down. But it's like he's a damn missile going downhill. Safety's got time to load up and make a play on Aaron Jones here. And he just – everything is falling forward. Everything's falling forward. So now we do have a third and one. And look, Josh Myers is playing against Harrison Phillips here and gets his head across, gets beat bad really, kind of whiffs on him. But the play speed of Aaron Jones – and Elgin Jenkins and Rashid Walker do a great job of doing what we call a slip block. So a double team on that, on that four eye, that four technique up to the second level. So Elgin secures that gap. You've got Tucker Craft on his own outside on the stand-up linebacker. And we get a seven-yard play on a third and one. Big time blocks. All three players outside. Tucker, Rashid, Elgin Jenkins. We get the cutoff. We'll call it cutoff in quotes by Josh Myers. And then the play speed downhill. For Aaron Jones, big time play, big time play. And then, so, hey, you did it twice. I'm going to give you the ball again on first down. And you just look at Tucker Craft here. I'm going to go back and show you. Tucker Craft, I have him circled up. And again, he's just playing against an outside stand up outside linebacker. These are the blocks he should be able to make. Hand in the ground, problem. Stand up guys, we talked about it last week when. Who was it over there for Carol? Was it Burns? Somebody was up. Uh, maybe it was Burns last week. But when you're playing stand up, a lot easier to deal with. And look how he finishes this play to the ground there. Look at that. Big time, right? That's a highlight real play for Tucker Craft. You get a finish, you get a domination block, runs right past you on the way to a first down. Big time block, man. And then Jordan Love, you just love – so they, they finally run the keeper. And the Minnesota Vikings have this play sniffed out. They do a great job. But instead of running for the pylon, he tucks it, two hands, goes underneath, and I know the fumble here, blah, 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 but they end up scoring. So McDuffie comes out of the game, and that means that Eric Wilson comes in. And the last thing you want to do right here, it's 17-3, to three, get the ball on the 18, 19-yard line. It's, you know, 353 left in the game. You don't want to give these guys anything. It's like, make the play right here, okay? And this is what we're talking about. You're still missing tackles. There's still errors in this game. Uh, it, it's not, a, it's not a, a clean game by any, you know, by any means. It's just the level of domination, I think, of the defensive line in particular. Did, they did such a good job of, of creating chaos for this quarterback. 
And it might not be showing in the numbers, but it's showing in the way that he had to move off his spot. But these kind of plays right here, you got to get rid of. Now look at the pressure. This is two plays in a row. Linebackers are, are going to show up at the line of scrimmage. Two plays in a row. One is just kind of a, a hard run, a run action, and the second one is going to be that, that dog from Quay Walker. But watch both these now. Quay comes down, immediately takes on that guard. And because Eric Wilson shoots that gap so hard, 67 Ingram can't get off the block, ends up making the play with Rashawn Gary at the line of scrimmage. So fantastic job of seeing it with your eyes and just reacting. Be a read and react athlete, straight downhill. Absolutely excellent, excellent job. And then I think we got the next play here. Quay Walker downhill is the best version of Quay. So he's up, showing, showing, showing. Great inside move. Sack, just big time play. And we we've talked about it for really two years now. When you point him in a direction and say, this is what we want, not every play, but a handful of times during the game, it increases the amount of aggressiveness and then, therefore, for me, multiplying his ability to demonstrate his athleticism, demonstrate his football IQ, his football aptitude, all the, the things, the reasons that you've drafted him, give him a reason to be aggressive. Give him a reason to be aggressive. Show this one more time here. I mean, that's a, that's a big-time move. Inside swipe, look how he turns his hips. And then has the athleticism, right, that Georgia athleticism, which I do not have, to stay up and make this play. It's big time, man. Talk about these quarterbacks. They struggle out of rhythm. That's the difference between a starting quarterback in this league and a non-starting quarterback in this league. The guys who get paid can throw off schedule. As soon as he has to climb the pocket right here, you know this ball's getting driven high. Anybody who's ever been in that position before, and I have, unfortunately, a high school quarterback, by the way, guys, really bad. When you run forward and have to step into the throw, the ball always sails on you, just like it does there. It happens, you know, 19 out of 20 times with these guys. I got the old Preston Smith appreciation post. So we don't get a first. We don't, we don't move the ball. Kick it back to him. There's 32 seconds left on the clock. I think they get a good play on the first down, so it's second and short. They decide they're going to do something with it because they – they look, second and two, it's on the 47. These guys need something to happen, right? Preston, who has beaten Derrissaw before in this game and historically, just does the – it's a show bull, quick arm over swipe. It's almost like a ghost, but you're going swipe instead of going underneath and dipping your shoulder. Really, really effective move for him. Sack fumble, big time play from a big time player look at that dude absolutely love so first of all as an offensive lineman i hate that rush because it's such a good rush but love is just absolutely dealing here about the second quarter this guy hit his stride and you just look he's throwing it he's stepping into these throws this play at the line of scrimmage when you see this at the line of scrimmage show this one more time yep there we are so they're drop zone and he knows he's got to throw over that flat player who's got nobody in the flat so he can actually sink such a confident throw to Dobbs. such a confident throw and then we got the bunch look and they're spying at the line of scrimmage. They're spying love at the line of scrimmage here. That means that the middle of the field is wide open. They run two vertical routes and let Jaden Reed work underneath. Like almost like on a Texas route. And unfortunately for the Vikings, they got a kill shot here. I think this might be Harrison Smith coming from right to left on your screen and misses. And it's all she wrote. Six the ball out there. I don't know if I like that or not, but six the ball out there, touchdown. And that's the that's the game. It's twenty three to three at half. Listen, guys, that's the show's over. You got a four string quarterback. Now they bring in Nick Mullins. A bunch of stuff happened. I only wanted to bring up this one one clip from the second half because I said it on TV last or said it on Twitter last night. I want to make sure everybody knew what I'm talking about. 
run into softness. The Minnesota Vikings, they love to bring pressure. And when they bring it, a lot of times you'll drop zone on the other side or you'll, or you'll loop out. the. If you do drop zone, you'll have to loop out to maintain leverage. For whatever reason, the in the in the arrow here, on the bottom point of the arrow, on the bottom left, that three technique doesn't try to cross face, okay? That linebacker at the bottom right of the arrow, I'm talking about the red arrow, goes outside of the three technique. So for whatever reason, the Minnesota Vikings are overloading gaps, but they're also not covering other gaps up. So you just see here, they actually have, I'm talking about the Packers, they have their center and their receiver blocking the only second level player on the screen. They got two guys. They got 80 and 71 blocking one guy. That's how open this is. And it's just as simple for Zach Tom and, and John Rennie Jr. It's one-on-one -on -one blocking on two players that are going to play soft outside leverage because they have contain. And all the other players are just, I guess they're hoping that Aaron Jones isn't in the game being the, because he's too fast to get caught by the backside player. And they bring three guys or four guys the backside, you know, A, B, and C gap. And it's just numbers are bad. And so you, these are huge plays. And it's like, it was nuts. It, I mean, it was nuts that they ran it the way they ran it. And obviously, Green Bay, the Green Bay Packers did such a good job of taking advantage. So let's see what I got wrong here. Go back to last week. Matchup wise, talk about Rashawn Gary's gonna get chipped early and often. How does the team respond? I said the left tackle's a great young player, was putting some opportunities on tape. I expect Preston to continue his excellent season. Check. Packer skill group versus Vikings pressure. Packers all about ID, communication, and execution. If Packers can, can find for love, their extended route showing to work against the secondary. Check. She Walker versus Daniil Hunter. Daniil's premier pass rusher in this league. So they both did well. Zach Tom, I think at one point they showed Zach Tom had, you know, seven, you know, we'll call them pass rushes. I don't know. How, I don't know how many true pass rushes Daniel had last night, just the way that the, the Green Bay Packers ran um, their offense. But we, you didn't hear about him all night. So great job by that. So those three matchups were fantastic. Keys to victory. Defensive communication. A lot of we talked about it yes last week. Even if they had Nick Mullins in or anybody else, the difference between those guys and and Kirk Cousins is they're going to try to cut the field in half. They're going to try to minimize the amount of reads he has to take. And what you saw last night was, you know, when he was in the pocket and he had a ton of time. Any quarterbacks can step in and make throws. Otherwise, they're not in the National Football League. It's the amount of processing and the speed of processing that makes or breaks a quarterback. So what they're going to try to do is minimize the amount of processing they have to do with under center play action, rollouts, screens, all that. They try to do all that stuff. But when you when you get them off schedule, when you get them running through the sidelines towards uh, their shoulder pads towards the sideline, they cannot operate the same. And so we did a good job of communicating. There just wasn't a lot of wide open players. You just sat back there, made your plays, let the defense win their individual matchups. And talking about the defensive line up front, every once in a while, they brought the one slot blitz from uh, uh, Keyshawn Nixon, wide open player in the middle. The guy just doesn't see him. Brock Quay, that's a pretty standard thing. Look, running backs just got to pick him up. Quay beats him badly. So these things aren't, this, they're not running a lot of like just crazy. I think they were running a cross dog on that, by the way. With, I think McDuffie was coming around the other side. But my point is, you're winning. Preston wins. Uh, uh, Kenny wins multiple times. Second half in, in particular. You're just you're winning. So win your individual matchups. You win games. Sound defense wins. Number two, more Aaron Jones. He got it. You know, twenty carries, six yards of carry, 120 yards. Um, lighter, I called him lighter fluid last week. I think lighter fluid is a really good kind of way to describe what Aaron Jones is to this offense. I said the Vikings are really good against the run. I just thought. Um, the, the way that the Packers dealt with pressure yesterday, and one thing that was interesting was the Vikings weren't coming off that's, you know, once you went into motion, they were going to stick with who was up. They weren't going to rock and roll and bring the other side, and they were going to, you know, if, if Harrison Smith was up, Harrison Smith was coming. They might call it off, but they're not going to bring pressure from the other side. Like the disguise really wasn't that big of a deal because all the pressure the Green Bay Packers have been running. 
pressure, or excuse me, the motion. Motion kills a lot of those looks. We talked about pressure of the quarterback. I have Mullins in here. It was obviously Hill last night for the, at least the first half. Don't have pocket presence. Don't have great timing um, in, in, compared to the first round pick or the first, excuse me, their first string quarterback, Kirk Cousins. Didn't get him on the ground a ton. I don't even have the actual number. How many sacks did we have last night? Uh, let me get here, guys. Now I'm now I'm just I have to know. Well, I'm not going to find out. It looks like I think we only had uh, two or three sacks, but it's the amount of it's the off schedule, right? So having to move his feet, having to step up in the pocket, having to exit the pocket, those things really really hurt those guys. So I thought everything we saw from I think we got everything we expected to see. The one thing you never know about is, is Jordan going to throw, he's going to step into his throws. And man, he just, look, there's obviously the touchdown that he missed and then the fourth and one that he missed, but he's dealing last night and stepping into throws, flipping his hips around. Just really, I mean, I th I don't want to, I, I think this is the best game I've seen him play. I think it's the best game I've seen him play. I, he's come to, you know, even the, even the, 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 not the duck, but even the lob, over there um on the on the on the what is that third and short play to uh Bo Melton when they with the, the safety and the and the the two safeties ran into each other it's just the recognition you just see the evolution of the quarterback at the quarterback position with the recognition pre-snap the ability to adjust and just taking what the defense gives you and doing such a good job of it and i don't know if it's as much him or we're just seeing that like the wide receiver room continuing to develop and get better. And obviously Jaden Reed is becoming a star with Christian Watson out. So you just got so many things and it makes you wonder what this, what this team looks like the entire year with Aaron Jones healthy. I think that's really, you know, one of the takeaways is you just wonder what the record would have been with Aaron Jones healthy. Um, my big takeaway for this game though, pressure creates problems for young quarterbacks. Pressure creates problems for young inexperienced quarterbacks. Pressure creates opportunities for higher level guys who are well prepared. And I think the difference in this game was the Minnesota Vikings pressure package didn't just create, we look, the Green Bay Packers looked at that just like we did when we had Brett and go, you know, Brett's the number one quarterback in the league against pressure. So we please, please bring pressure against us. And last night it looked like really Minnesota, please bring pressure. We want you to bring, we feel really good about the rest of our matchups. We don't think your corner is going to hold up. We think you're going to play soft. We think our quarterback can make the throws, you know, and we think that they're going to ID and communicate so they can lead to a better execution than we had years in, in, in weeks prior. And they just played at a high, high level. So that high pressure package didn't work as well as we're going to win up front. We're going to bring enough dogs and, and safety blitzes and corner blitzes or nickel, really slot nickel blitzes to keep you honest, but we're going to win our individual matchups. That matters. And we're going to try to play sound defense. Or we're going to play physical football. And that one last night. So hats off to game plans, DC, OC. Great job. I think game planning with this team last night in a, in really what is a must win game. I'm going to hit a couple of listener questions before we go. I just got to read them off the phone here because well, quite frankly, I was too lazy to, uh, to write them down. First one. Oh, so here we go. Your thoughts on yesterday's quarterbacks versus Jay and Stokes. Ride with the guys who will ball, even less talented. Always going to say that. Always going to say ride with the guys who are 100% committed. I'm not, but here's what I'm not going to say. I'm not going to say that those other two guys aren't committed. What I'm going to say is they're probably frustrated because they think that they're, they haven't been utilized the, the right way. Whether that's right or, you know, right or wrong. I think what also happens is with young guys, the, the with a young guy, you can go, I want you to do this and this, and you're, and I'm happy. And they'll go, oh, okay. And they'll do that as well as they can. With an older guy, they're like, well, wait a second, I'm really good. So I want to do this, 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 and this. And sometimes they stretch themselves too thin from kind of a responsibility standpoint. It's like stay. the younger guy, it's easier to stay in your lane. And sometimes that looks better. But again, don't minimize, like don't blow this out of proportion, man. You had a four-string quarterback in the game last night. That makes a big difference. You know, we can't sit here and 
talk about quarterbacks of the Green Bay Packers every week and then go, oh, yeah, they played a four-string quarterback in the first half and they had scored three points or our quarterbacks are killing Justin Jefferson or whatever the case may be. It's just not true. They played well, but it's, that narrative is does that does not play. Uh, yeah, DBs starting DBs. Gary's stats seem to have fallen off the last few weeks. Is he being okay? Is is he being double teamed, getting more attention, or is play effort falling off? Definitely not play effort falling off. One hundred percent not. You know, we always talk about with, with Rashawn Gary. One thing that I am not a big fan. There's two things that are going on here. One is he plays. Sometimes he he does get doubled because he's really good. Sometimes he goes high and it's not. It doesn't work out great. They're running more kind of games with him over there, which I don't love. But here's the big thing: he's not on the field as much as he used to be. And Igbari, Lucas Van Ness, like they get a lot of reps now, and they're getting reps in, in in situations where they're passing the football. You think about how many times, like it's almost like you put your second unit. And we showed it on tape when they're on the thirty yard line going out. It's usually like you want to stop. Historically. A D coordinator is going to be like, all right, I want to stop him at the 20 and the 30 yard line. And then if they get to the 40, I'll put our backups in. And then when they get to the far 40 going in, I'm going to put my first string back in because I don't want him to get a field goal. That's how they used to think about it. I don't know what they're thinking now, but these guys are starting a lot. First down, second down at the 30 yard line. You're putting, you're putting your backups in and the pass rushes isn't what it usually is, but really you're not getting Rashawn Gary reps. So maybe he's on a pitch count still. Maybe he's just not getting the reps that, you know, it feel, and maybe I'm wrong, but it feels like he's not getting reps in passing situations as much as he did. Um, yeah. The, what did Joe Barry do differently? I, I don't, I just don't know how much they did. We've seen everything that they did last night. We've seen before it, I, to me, it comes down to quality of play. The defensive line position it comes down to quality of play for, I mean, from a, the entire group, really the defensive group, but really, uh, I, but I think it starts with the leadership, the Prestons, the Kennys, the Rashad, that uh, Wooden had a big game last night, right? Barnes still shows up. You know, shows up. Did you, they, those guys just played well. They outplayed that defense and or that offensive line. And when when Darisau gets beat early by Preston Smith, I just I'm promising you this: when they're sitting on the sidelines in the first series or whatever that was, second series, and they're like, oh, Preston Smith just beat him really bad and got he got he he heated up the quarterback. They're going like, man, there's a long game left. And Darisaw's going, man, there's a long game left. He already beat me on the first series, second series. Like, that's a problem. Even though he didn't get a sack. You start thinking about it. And it changes the way you play football, especially for young guys. I'm talking about the, you could be talking about the tackle or the quarterback. That's, how, that's what happens. So, guys, listen, thanks so much for watching these shows. Uh, 2024. I'm going to change. We're going to we're going to change this this up a little bit. I think as far as uh, how it's branded and, and and try to do a couple different things. But uh, I I really you know selfishly I really like watching film and, and breaking down tapes. For those of you who enjoy watching these shows and hit the like buttons and subscribe and stuff and and, and keep it and keep it going. Make it make make me feel like it's it's um uh what's the word I'm looking for? It make makes me feel like I'm, I'm being some I'm doing some sort of useful thing for the Green Bay Packers community. Thank you. Uh, happy New Year's, everybody. We'll get a preview show out uh, for the Bears game upcoming. It's going to be exciting. But uh, enjoy the day. Enjoy some of the college football that's on today. I, you know, I think it's even playing right now, but we'll talk to you soon.